What's going on, folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here. Uh, in case you missed one of my previous videos, I don't know what timeline things have come out in, but I was sick for the past couple days. I'm still in the process of getting over that. But we got some Bigby's Glory of the Giants stuff in the form of two videos. Uh, one is a first look, and the other one is everything you need to know about Bigby's Glory of the Giants. If you're unfamiliar or just forgot because this book has been kind of in limbo for a while, it's coming out the 15th of August. It is the giant-based source book for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. It's going to include, I think, at least one new class and some new stuff similar uh, to fizz bands, but seemingly with less player-based content. Let's go ahead and watch those videos. So here is the first look. So we'll watch it together for the first time. We're here today to talk to you about Bigby Presents... Glory of the Giants. I'm James Wyatt, I write D&D books. And I'm Emmy Tanji, I can't draw and I find people who do. And we're super excited about this book because it was an opportunity for us to explore the mythic history of giants, what makes them cool and awesome, Sounds more really than just monsters that you fight in a dungeon. They're a people with this incredible history and lore and so much potential to shape your entire game world. Hey James, do you know what my favorite part of this big book of giants is? Which part? It is the big chapter of big creatures. <laughs> the bestiary is the biggest chapter in the book, and it's chock full of monsters you can add to your D&D game. All kinds of giants, giants that use runic magic, giants that have been transformed by their devotion to fiendish overlords to become Ooh, like demons the themselves. Flare. Giant animals, including dinosaurs that are bigger than anything that ever walked this earth. Giant tick. The giant tick that preys on giants, giant geese, and so much more. And also through the visuals, we were able to put them in places that are not just in battle, that are not just destroying towns and fighting dragons. Like we are showing them walking alongside other adventurers. We are exploring giant beasts, dinosaurs that giants can even ride on. Though we do have some giants fighting dragons. We do have one, yeah. And also there is a giant something that players will not see coming. <laughs> They won't see it coming because they're standing on it. You know, we built a city on that hill over there and then one day the hill got up and walked away because it was a giant. How do you even deal with something like that? Speaking of which, how does this book help players bring giants onto the table? So there's a lot of advice in this book for bringing giants to life. Everything from, you know, stand up and stomp around a little bit to help your players understand just how big a giant is. Can the players be affected by giant strength? Absolutely. You, there's a whole chapter in here to help you make your character feel a little bit more like a part of the world of the giants. You can have one of two backgrounds that tie you into the story of giants. You could be a rune carver who carves giant runes and That's cool. taps into the magic of giants. Or you can be a giant foundling who might have been raised by giants or lived among giants and Maybe your greatsword is a giant-sized letter opener, but hey, it works. Then there's a barbarian subclass that when you rage, mm -hmm. makes you giant-sized and lets you throw things and people around, reflecting the fury of the giants. <laughs> I could use that one, Sonora. <laughs> <laughs> you know, James, as a new trying to be DM, the thing I love most are tables. Tables are super helpful, and you are in luck if you like tables, because there's tons of tables in this book to help a DM, whether you're brand new or very experienced, generate encounters with giants. There's maps you can use to drop your adventures in. Okay. The book is full of tools to help DMs get their giant-themed adventures off the ground. And the narrator of this book is the famous wizard Bigby. Thanks, Bigby. So Bigby leads us on this journey of exploration as we discover together that giants are more than just creatures to be fought in a dungeon. They're people with this rich mythic history waiting to be discovered. So go to D&D Beyond or your local game store to pre-order now. All right, so interesting stuff here in the first look video. Um, the art always a plus right i can never really be against the art i love seeing new art especially for old stuff um or or new stuff really any new D, &D related art whether it be you know just something i see on twitter or in an official book i love art i cannot get enough awesome D, &D art so that always a big plus I love the concept that there's going to be a bunch of giant-sized dinosaurs. Obviously, dinosaurs uh, resonate really heavily with me. 
uh basically you know i am a geologist i had you know uh, or at least that's what my degree is in and for the longest time i had this trajectory of wanting to become a paleontologist uh as my real world job um that didn't pan out but you know it is what it is but my my love for dinosaurs and fossils and things has never left so that's really exciting to me and it's actually even a little more disappointing in that we got really close to a pet based druid class with the primeval druid that was in the one on earth arcana that got left behind and you know it had this concept of like summoning a creature and it kind of was like could it be a dinosaur i don't know and especially now that they're going to be including awesome cool dinosaurs I'm a little bummed that that class couldn't have been reworked to get to something that we actually wanted. I thought it was close. It was just kind of boring. But potentially, hopefully, uh, and that means druids out there that are playing with the current rules, moon druids specifically, if you're looking for new beast options, you might get them. Assuming they're not too high of a CR for you to be able to transform into, Perhaps you'll get into that. I like the concept of the literal hill giant, like you're on a hill and it gets up and walks away. Uh, we saw what looked like a golden goose going with like traditional fairy tale giants there. Cool stuff. I just, again, giants are not something I'm super like hyped about in Dungeons and Dragons. I feel like while they are cool and interesting and fantasy, I always feel like giants are kind of the more like mundane of the fantasy creatures. Dragons, I get. I think there's a lot of other stuff. I probably would have gone more towards, like, fiends or aberrations as my next move as opposed to giants. Maybe even oozes would be a little crazy. But either way, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the Everything You About Need to Know video. Book because giants, what is the name of the book and what do we find <clears throat> in it? Bigby presents Glory of the Giants is the name of the book. And in it, we find both glory and giants with a healthy dose of Bigby. <laughs> Perfect. For those that don't know, who is Bigby? Bigby is a famous wizard from the world of Greyhawk who's best known for his Bigby's Hand spell. He was a friend of Mordenkainen and Mordenkainen. <laughs> Depending on how you want to say day, it. Yeah. Yeah. They actually have sort of a weird troubled history where, where Bigby was a henchman to Mordenkainen. The relationship was not always amicable, but they grew to be friends and, and peers, equals in the wizarding world. We have a narrative of Bigby stretching through the, it's really primarily told in the chapter start illustrations for the six chapters of this book. In the first one, we see Bigby killed by a frost giant's boulder, <laughs> smushed under the boulder. That's right, yeah, the artwork well, for that is fantastic. Yes. While Morden Cannon looks on horrified. <laughs> And the, the sort of narrative that accompanies that explains that after that fateful incident, uh, Mordenkainen claims that no cleric was available to cast Ray's dead, only a druid with reincarnation, which is why Bigby is a gnome I was, in the rest of the art throughout this book. I was wondering I why that was. Bigby is like a little salty about that whole... He is a little salty about that, yeah. Yeah. I, li okay. I like the through lines in all the books, that you, that you always have that commentary. I always find that to be really fun. This book in particular, Bigby's journey, I mean, it starts with that very unfortunate beginning. And in the next one, we see him encounter Dian Castra, uh, this giant demigod, the daughter of Amun, mm. um, who, who is known for wandering in the material plane and interacting with mortals She's sometimes. Hot. And he strikes up a friendship with this giant demigod and sort of grows beyond his prejudice about giants. He, his eyes are opened to the glory of giants. He realizes the majesty of their civilization and the glory that they have lost. What in particular are you excited about in this book? Because like, there's a lot <laughs> in the book. We have like player options. We've got deep lore dives. We have story hooks. We have locations. We have monsters. So uh, player options in the book include the path of the giant barbarian. So I played a gnome pirate in a one-shot uh, a couple months ago who he was this mild-mannered little gnome, but when the ship got attacked, yeah. he ran to this barrel by the mast with a big do not touch sign on it that had a great ax in it. He pulls out this great ax that's like twice his size, and then he grows to four times his size and swings this ax around because he becomes large when he rages. I, I am a fan of <laughs> always taking a very uh, tiny creature and making it huge, like a goblin, a gnome, a halfling. Yeah, yeah. the art for that shows a halfling grown to giant size. 
beyond just that, that one subclass, there's uh, background options, two of them that give you feats that let you tie into the flavor of giants in cool and exciting ways. Those are like kind of themed as if you've been living amongst giants your entire life. The first one is the giant foundling background that, that gives you the strike of the giant's feet. That, that is like, yes, I grew up among giants. I grew up around giants. We now have confirmed that they said the strike of the giant's feet. Where there was, if you recall, a bunch of feats related to giants in that original Unearthed Arcana. Seems like some of those feats are going to make their way through into the, uh, the final version here. Stuff. I might have a, a salad fork as my trident. Um, <laughs> so the second one is the Rune Carver, which uh, means that you've studied ancient giant magic, the runes that they carve into things to, to wield magic, which is a theme that gets picked up primarily in the bestiary chapter in the book with lots of giants that use that magic as well. Yeah, I did notice that like a lot of the monsters like have different types of runecraft magic. The or minis look fantastic. Different types of energies in the planes, yep. uh, which is really fun. But like once we get past the player options, which are really cool, and I really like the Barbarian, you know, Path of the Giant because you get big, you can move people around the battlefield, you can throw people even against their will, and then they have to take damage. You, I mean, you, yep. get, you get to be huge. Yep. It's very Barbarian friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the next chapter is really about bringing giants to life and showing how eclectic they are in D&D, because I'm a big fan of giants. I never thought I would get this much giant lore. <laughs> yeah, so it starts off talking about sort of giving the DM tips for, for bringing the giant to life at the table, helping you convey the scale of the encounter that you're having <laughs> to the players. Um, everything from stand up at the table and stop your feet and make some noise to things like the giant is holding a watermelon and takes a bite out of it as if it's an apple, right? Just that kind of, okay, I get a sense of how big this is. Um, so then it goes on to talk about uh, things like giant society, giant organizations, giant gods is a big part of it. We talk about Anam and all his children, but then also all the evil or subversive forces that try to lure giants away from the worship of Anam and his children, which include things like a couple of demon princes, um, Yinagu, Kastuchi, uh, Demogorgon, but also forces like elemental evil, which tie into the giant's elemental connections, uh, but, but twist those to corrupted ends. Aside from all the adventure hooks, there's a lot of great locations that themselves feel like adventure hooks, whether it's like a, like a root of the world tree and that's a location. Tell me about the different locations that we can find. Right, so there's like 18 locations, I think, something like that. Mm. Um, each of them has a full page map and then a full page of, of description. We included six that are pretty closely tied to the six giant kinds in the Monster Manual, but right. they're not just like studying of the hill giant chief, glacial rift of the frost giant Jarl. In each case, we were trying to evoke the, the glory of giants, right? There's like a star forge, literally from a fallen star, where, where Bigby went and forged his beneficent bracelet, which uh, appears in the book as well. The kind Magic of place dinos. where you go to make an artifact. There's uh, a demiplane, the idea being it was removed from the world before the fall of some great giant empire of the past to sort of preserve it off in the distance. But, but it, what's happened to it in the meantime? Then there's a huge section of magic items. Uh, these are items that are giant themed in various ways. There's, there's actually three artifacts in this chapter. One is connected to Anam, one is connected to Dian Castra, and one is Bigby's Beneficent Bracelet. But then a whole bunch of other magic items that might be things that giants made for their their little humanoid friends yeah. or things that they made for themselves. Many things that incorporate giant runes on them. There's like a giant blunder bus, which there I is... immediately gravitated towards. I'm like, that's going to have some heft. Yes. <laughs> uh, it really is much like, you know, Fizben's Treasury of Dragons. They're like, what are all these giant themed magical items? Uh, that's what's really fun. Yep. There's a lot, there's a lot for players in this. There is, it, it might not be immediately obvious when you look at it beyond, you know, that first chapter of player options, but then those treasures are a pretty saucy draw. So we've got like all those great adventure hooks and we've got a lot, a lot of tables that are really fun. And a lot of those, those, those encounter tables are referencing brand new monsters that we've never seen before um, that you kind of interact with in ways that you've never done before. I'm surprised by how many monsters are in this book. There's a lot. It is primarily a monster book. The, the, the bestiary chapter is like 75 monsters. It's the biggest chapter of the book. Yeah, can you break down some of that? Because, <laughs> because I expected giants, but we, we're getting different types of giants. Giants that have been affected by the elemental planes, giants that have been affected by the, you know, the outer planes that have made deals, that know magic. We have hulks. We have <laughs> other different creatures that we haven't encountered before. And it's, it's so, there's so many different choices and great narrative hooks associated with all of them. I'm genuinely shocked at how <laughs> many times there are in this and how different all of them are. Yeah. First off, the Mind Flayer Eden is disgusting. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. But there's so many things like that. There's a giant tick. There's like everything that you could possibly kind of want or like whatever, you know, creepy permutation or, or, or like how kind of wondrous, yeah. like the Mist Hulk. Stuff like that is just amazing to me. You did a pretty good job of hitting on the major categories of monsters that are in this chapter. There's uh, a couple of new kinds of giants. The Death Giant, I think, is the, the big one there. Yeah. As well as like Fomorians that are not corrupted, not fallen. Yeah. Um, but then mm. 
magic using giants, giants that all have some rune carved item on them that fuels their magical power. We've got giant cultists, so that includes things like four elemental evil giants, but then also giants that have been transformed into fiends uh, by their uh, contact with a demon lord or, or an archdevil. The elemental hulks are sort of a, a withered branch of the giant family tree. These are giants that have strayed so far from their, their personhood. They're, they're really just monsters at this point. They're elementals, they're not giants anymore. And they're weaker and smaller than um, giants, but they're, they're good monsters to just fight when you need a... <laughs> this is, oh, we're exploring this ancient giant ruin. It's not inhabited by giants anymore. It's ha inhabited by these things. We've got a lot of beast type creatures, including dinosaurs and the aforementioned ticks and oxen and the grinning cat is a nod to the it's a giant goose. <laughs> there is a giant goose that lays golden eggs. I'm very fond of that goose. That's another one of my weird little things I put in this book is the, the table for what happens when you open the golden egg. <laughs> what did you enjoy the most about like create, creating this book? Because it's something I can want hammering home. This really does feel like the companion book to Fizz fans. We're getting that much lore, that many magical items. We're getting so many more monsters. <laughs> <laughs> True confession time. Yeah. I was nervous when I started off working on this book um, because dragons felt naturally exciting for me. It was like, mm -hmm. yes, I can totally write a book about dragons and make it awesome. You already dragons did. Like a harder sell. But actually, something that you said when we were talking about... I believe James Wyatt wrote the original 3.5 Draconomicon, so obviously him writing Fizzbands was a natural progression. Um, but I'm curious, is he, it sounds like to me he has sort of or had the same reservations that I have about this book that I just don't find Giants that interesting. Uh, Fizzbands helped crystallize it in my brain. You talked mm. about re-mystifying dragons. And so from the outset, my mission statement for this book was remystifying giants um, in the same way and emphasizing that they're not, they are big people, but they're not just big people. They're powerful and magical and ancient and glorious. Um, and really digging into that and sinking my teeth into that made me appreciate giants in D&D in a way I never have before. It's kind of like the giant lore book I, ever, I always kind of wanted. Like I would read this <laughs> even if I didn't play D&D and look through the monsters because there are so many. Yeah. And um, again, they're also unique. The, it, and the art is so metal. I have no other way to explain <laughs> this. The art is so, it's over the top because they're giants. Like if you're a death giant, you're not subtle about it. Like <laughs> you're picking up on that vibe. You know, right. like if that's you right. are part demon, part infernal, and also a fire giant, you are you look like Surtur from like Thor Ragnarok. Like yes. it's so intense. Why should Dungeon Masters and even players pick up this book? What do they get? What anybody who picks up this book is gonna find is a great big toolbox. So whether you are looking for tools you can add to your character to give them some connection to giants, some flavoring of giants, or you're looking for tools to add to a single encounter, a whole adventure, an entire campaign built around giants. This book is chock full of, of resources you can use to do that. So there you go, folks. What are your thoughts on Big B's Glory of the Giants uh, as it stands with this more information? Again, we're a month out from the actual release date of the book itself. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll look into this one and talk about, you know, covering the stuff that I would normally cover in it. I'm curious. Um... Like I said, Giants, not my, my, you know, not probably wouldn't have been my second pick following Dragons either. Like, Dragons was the clear winner. Now, they said there's a lot of lore. I feel like we didn't get as much lore as I wanted in Fizzbands, so maybe Giants, again, I wasn't really looking for Giant lore, so I guess any lore I get will be more so. Um, but I guess there's more opportunity, because when you looked at what you got in Fizzbands, you got three races... In the three versions of the Dragonborn, you got two classes. You got, I think, two backgrounds and a bunch of magic items. You're only going to get... I don't think you're getting any races in here. You're not getting... Uh, you're only getting one class. So there's more space saved up front. So maybe that's room for more lore or more magic items or maybe more um, monsters. I don't know. I'm curious. Like I said, I probably would have gone... Like, Undead seems like a really simple jump to go to because like there's a lot of variety of undead and unfortunately you know i, I think like undead aberrations are a pretty unique thing to D D because that would cover things like mind flayers and beholders i guess you know you throw this one out there you see how it does we'll see if you had to well one let me know in the comments are you interested more interested less interested in bigby's glory of the giants based on these videos uh, and then two, what would be the next monster focus book you'd want to see? Again, taking a look at the monster types, whether that be oozes, beasts, whatever it is. Let me know what that, what you'd like the next one to be in the comments down below. I'll see you all next time.